Okay, I'm actually doing some bailing. Uh, yesterday we had a late shower. Uh, it rained a lot more at the farm than it did actually on this particular field. Uh, but we had already raked it. But I'm going to show you what I got out here. Um, this is the hay that I planted this spring. And as you can see, after our dry spell, it actually did decide to grow. Now, this stuff was supposed to produce at least a ton to the acre, which I don't believe it's doing. I'll let you know when I get it all stacked up. There's actually 50, 50, 43 acres here, so I'm kind of hoping for at least 80 bales. Right, you know, 80 bales would do it. That would give me the... Uh, that would give me the ton to the acre, which honestly doesn't cut what I've got into it for the first year as far as fertilizer and seed cost. Um, I think seed cost alone is somewhere around $70 an acre, and the fertilizer obviously is another $70. So I got like 140, like $140 to the acre on this. Uh, we had a really bad dry spell early on in May. It was uh, six weeks with absolutely no rain. And I was worried that this stuff was going to be just dead. Um, but I had to mow it. I had to mow it. Now, if you don't remember what this was, it's reed canary and orchard grass and then the real aggressive one, which is K31, that can take the drought and the disease and the insects and everything that you can throw at it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what is growing back so vigorously, but my money is that that's the, uh, the K31 over the orchard grass, but boy, does it look nice. So, uh, it's been rained on twice, <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm finally actually able to get it to get it into a bale. Uh, if I do get a ton to the acre, that's going to amount to about $100 to the acre. So, I'm in the hole this year. On this ground, I'm in the hole about, uh, yeah, 77, about $40 to the acre. So, I'm losing $40 to the acre just in... The uh, you know the initial planting and everything else and uh, fertilizer. Oh, so you're probably wondering how I could oh, excuse me afford to do this. Well, it's going to be a tight year. That's all I can say um, because I did plant 700 acres of this stuff. Now over 700 acres. If I lose 40 dollars an acre, uh, seven times four is 14 and 28. That's 28. What is that? Twenty-eight hundred, twenty-eight thousand, twenty-eight thousand dollars. Yeah, right. Let's see. Yeah, twenty-eight thousand dollars. All right, so it's going to cost me twenty-eight thousand dollars this year just to have this crop in the ground. You know, that's what I'm going to be in the hole. So it kind of sucks that. But next year, it's a two, two and a half ton crop next year. And then the following year, it will be a three, three and a half ton of the acre crop if I feed it properly. So next year, I'll be in the back in the black. Oh, really tired, guys. But anyway, uh, so I'll be back in the black next uh, next year. And, uh, you know, but whatever. Uh, the other thing is I picked up some other ground, so it's going to offset the cost. It just get absorbed into the year's uh, expenses and, and earnings. But, you know, I had to do it. I just could not afford to uh, grow corn and soybeans anymore because of the white-tailed deer. Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there like, there's no way in hell the white-tailed deer can do this, you know, put somebody out of business. Well, if you look in this area, this used to all be corn and soybeans and dairy, and there were hogs at one time and chickens. The Jews had a lot of chickens here, but they went back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, hogs went out probably in the late eight, mid to late 80s. And, of course, dairy was out in the 90s, and we were the last ones hanging on until 2011. So, grain prices last year were good, but the yields were bad. The deer just hammered me. Uh, last year was a great growing season. Probably grew, grew the most bushels per acre I ever grew where it was good, but where it was bad, it only allowed me to produce 18.6 bushels to the acre over 460 acres. So, that's what 
the white-tailed deer will do to you. Uh, this field here is 43 acres, and last year this was soybeans. And up until this point, I was at the beginning of the field, I was somewhere around 60, 70 bushels the acre. But this point, which is about two-thirds down the field, it started to go to about, I was getting about 20 bushels the acre here. And by the time I got to the last 10 acres of this field, I was down around three or four bushels to the acre. So the average of the field was only about, oh, 28 on this field alone. The other fields on the other side, they were they were just worse. They were worse. So white-tailed deer are very destructive. And as you can see, I got Timothy over here. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the 4960 that I rebuilt. He's stacking hay. Uh, the 4960 has actually been knock on some form of wood flawless since I rebuilt it. I mean, I don't think there was... Oh, God damn. Tires. That's the only thing I had to put on was tires. So, back tires. Front tires are 11 years old. I put them on there. Even one of them was scorched. Those were fire stones. The titans on the back were junk. Now well, there he is waiting for me to get ahead of him. I don't know. What do we got? Now we're getting close. Here he goes. He's going to cut in front of me. Dirty, rotten bastard. Nah, he's a good kid. He really is. He's a good boy. All right. So anyways, I guess you're just gonna ride along. This is a computer. I don't know if you guys can. These are touchscreen computers to my non-ag guys. Um, you know, maybe I can go through some of the functions there. A bale just fell off. I do have a load sensor that is not working properly. That's why that red arrow is there. Um, but I'm making nice tight square bales, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. Uh, I called New Holland, and of course, I called Messix, and of course they did not even and return my phone calls, which kind of aggravated me, but ah, what the heck are you going to do? There goes Speedy. And he's got three more bales there. He's only got to grab two more. And these windrows are nothing because this is new seeded grass and it just really isn't going to produce too much. But, yeah. So, yeah, there's just a whole bunch of stuff you can do. You can automatic and manual. I can set the density up higher. And there goes Tim. That's probably more interesting than what I was going to show you. There he is. And he's going to grab that one. And field work. So, yeah, this channel has not turned into... Um, an auto mechanic repair shop or a tra just a strictly a tractor repair channel. <laughs> you know, it just hasn't. Uh, it's still a farming channel and I am going to be doing a lot more farming because quite honestly, it is July 22nd and I am, I've only done about, I've only bailed 1,591 bales. I should be somewhere around 5,000 bales right now. So I'm pretty far behind because of the bad weather. I did put off making hay until uh, July just because uh, it was so wet and I wanted the hay to grow a little bit. Because, oh, Jesus. That is a washout. I don't know where in the hell that came from. But anyways, I wanted the hay to grow a little bit before I got into it because of the dry spell that we did have. So that's another reason why I'm late. Plus, now that I'm ready to actually make hay, I'm just getting rain every damn day. Uh, so I highly doubt that I'm going to be even doing anything fun this summer, which I planned on doing with the kids. You know, late summer, I wanted to take a couple of weeks off and, and just go camping or something with them because, well, let's face it, the two youngest ones are 14 and 15, Peyton's 15, so I'll have three 15-year-olds here pretty soon. And, yeah, don't ask how that happened, but it did. Um, yeah, three 15-year-olds. I got a, two 15-year-olds right now, and Joe is about to click over to 15, so, you know, I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, I do miss him, but, you know, I, 
I miss my children when they're gone. Uh, most fathers would. But anyways, enough of that crap. So, uh, we're up to nine minutes, and I think everybody wants to see a ten-minute video of me driving my 8120, and of course, Tim with that 4960 picking up bales, and I can't keep ahead of them with that, with hay of this quality or this quantity, um, just because I just can't keep ahead of him. He's uh, moving at a phenomenal rate of speed uh, with that thing. The old 4450, he could keep, he couldn't keep up to me, but with the 4960 power shift transmission, he just bang, bang, bang through the gears, gets up to the pile, throws it in reverse, bang, 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 backs it up, throws it up in there, and he's off again. So, and plus, um, with this new baler, I mean, I'm moving at 9.2 miles an hour, 9 mile an hour or better, and that produces, oh, I just made a knot. Uh, that produces a lot of hay in a big hurry. This is Baylor's New Holland Baylor is just second to none, the best in the world. At least this particular model is. Um, yeah, this is a BB340 crop cutter. But anyways, I guess it's enough of me ranting and babbling and carrying on. So, if you like this video, you can please comment, rate, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out OneLonelyFarmer.com uh, for t-shirts, uh, mugs, hats, other things like that. Um, I'm also starting to think that I need some new t-shirts to get up there because, you know, that offensive t-shirt, not everybody's parents will let them get that. Um, and a lot of people just want a t-shirt that says OLF on the front and maybe YouTube on the back. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, everybody loves YouTube. Everybody knows YouTube. And honestly, all of my shirts, none of them have YouTube on the logo anywhere. So I'm going to change that. I think I'm just going to do OLF on the front and YouTube on the back. And that'll be that. So everybody knows where to go see One Lonely Farmer. Anyway, Thanks for watching again. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Subscribe. One on the farmer. www.goodlovefarmer.com. Bye.